We're giving listeners of Invisible Choir another free sampling of the weekly Felony Friday mini-episode, available on our Patreon, Invisible Choir Premium. Sign up today for just $5 per month for early regular episode releases, Felony Friday weekly episodes, exclusive full-length premium episodes, and occasional merchandise perks. Or consider joining higher tiers of support like Key and Kimberly recently did to gain access to even more perks and to become a participating member of the Invisible Choir team. Now, on with the show. Invisible Choir explores detailed depictions of violence and murder and is not appropriate for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Hey, is that crashing out here behind you? Is that them? Welcome to another edition of Felony Friday on Invisible Choir Premium. I'm your host, Michael Ojibwe. Thank you so much for joining us and for your continued support on Patreon. We have a frightening one this week, a case that will challenge the notion of a peaceful home. In a scenario most of us fear never happens, we examine the case of one homeowner who, when awoken to the terrifying sounds of a late night home invasion, did what many of us claim we would, until he was confronted by the intruder. It's a case that will leave you wondering, when confronted with certain danger in the black of night in your own home, would you ultimately stand your ground? It's the literal definition of a nightmare scenario. You're lying in bed sound asleep, when suddenly you're jolted awake by a noise, a crashing sound, perhaps glass breaking. Something so out of the ordinary, your body immediately enters a heightened adrenaline-fueled state. You hold your breath, listening carefully, the deafening thunder of your own heartbeat drowning out the ambient noises of the evening. There it is again. Suddenly you realize it is no nightmare at all. Someone is breaking into your home. 911, what are you reporting? Yeah, the house is getting around right now. Do you see someone inside? Yeah, he's, he's inside right now. Okay, where are you? Okay. Are you armed? Yeah, I have a gun. Okay. Is that the house, correct? It is. A 35-year-old homeowner in White Center, Washington, phones 911 from his upstairs bedroom just after 2.30 in the morning on April 22, 2019. He hears crashing sounds from what he believes are multiple intruders breaking into his home. He grabs a firearm and quickly moves into his bedroom closet, lying in wait, hoping they don't make their way upstairs. Okay, is that crashing out here behind you? Is that them? Okay. Hey, is that crashing out here behind you? Is that them? Okay, and you're upstairs? Yep. Yeah. And you don't have any further description of them right now, correct? Okay, I'm letting The man is home alone. He has children, but they are not staying with him at the time. As the sounds grow nearer, he audibly gasps in between held breaths, his voice growing softer as they come closer. Okay, bear with me. I've got officers. Okay, I've got officers heading your way. Okay. Do you live with anybody else? No, I'm by myself. Okay. Okay. Are you able... Do they know you're there? No. Okay. Okay. Stay quiet. Okay. Keep yourself safe. Okay. 911 operator Zoe Birkbeck is remarkably calm and does her best to keep the homeowner safely hidden as the potential of his discovery increases with each passing second. She quickly realizes the man is fast running out of options once he stops responding to her questions, reverting to silence as the men near his hiding place. Okay. You're doing great. Stay with me. They just broke out all the windows? Okay. We've got officers on the way, okay. Can you hear how many people are there? Can you still hear them? It's a situation no one ever wants to be in. Hiding. A prisoner in your own home. What most consider the safest place they know can quickly become a deadly killing ground during a late-night home invasion. The homeowner, though armed and knowledgeable regarding the layout of his home, quietly waits in terror. The sheer gravity of that which is unknown, of that which is uncertain in the dark, is enough to break anyone. But not everyone is armed with a loaded gun in this situation. The homeowner believes two or three men who are now inside of his home are quickly making their way through his prized possessions, hastily emptying out drawers onto the floor, knocking over or breaking anything in sight as they move systematically throughout the unfamiliar corridors of his home. The image of dark silhouettes surely haunt his vision as he desperately squints his eyes, allowing them to adjust to the near darkness. But this man is not hiding. 
awaiting his most certain death upon discovery. No, he is doing his best to blend in with his surroundings. He is waiting in ambush. For the next few moments, modern men await the potential duel of the Wild West, because ultimately, whoever gets the first draw walks away with their life. Okay, your door locked. <laughs> Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? The guttural breathing of a dying man is clearly heard after ten gunshots fire out in rapid succession. The homeowner is no longer responding, just moments after the scene erupts in total chaos. And just as quickly as it all began, it was over in a matter of seconds. And all that remained was silence. Hello, if you can hear me, I need you to talk to me. I need to know what's going on. Hello? Hey, what's going on? Where are you? Okay, we, we've got officers coming. What's going on? What happened? I lost the phone. Hold on. Okay, Hello? I heard shots. What happened? I, I had to shoot him. He came after me. I'm hiding in my closet by bedroom. Uh, okay, where are you right now? I'm sorry, I don't know. No, I'll, no you're okay. I'm in my okay. bedroom upstairs. Okay, so if I'm coming up the stairs, there's, where there's is it? There's more people. There's still more people? Okay. Just, yeah. How many more? Please hurry, please hurry. Yep, nope, we've got officers there's, coming. There's another, there's another guy downstairs. I think he just left. Okay, did you get a description of him? I didn't, I didn't. Okay, stay safe, okay. Walk me okay, through your bedroom. I'm hiding in my closet. Okay, you're doing okay, you're doing deep breath, okay? down the hall. Okay, up yeah. the stairs, down the hall. What side? Um, the back room. Okay, did the inj okay, you're okay, you're okay. Did the person that you shot, did he leave, okay? Or is he still on the ground there? No, he's down, he's here on the ground. He's hurt. Okay, okay, bear with me. The homeowner recalls hearing one of the men slowly walking up the stairs towards his bedroom at the end of the hall, at which point he drew his weapon and fired. The intruder can be heard on the floor in the background groaning a hauntingly low death howl as he slowly dies. Police are still nowhere near the home. The homeowner retreats back to the closet and reconnects with Burke back on the call. Where did you shoot him? I, I don't know. It That's was, okay. That's okay. You're doing a great job. Did you hit the to, other one? I just tried to shoot. I just nope, tried to I shoot understand. for the guy. That was it. I, I understand. I understand. You're doing great. Did you hit the other one? Do you know? I, I, no, the other guy was um, downstairs. I think. I think he ran. Okay. You're doing a great job. Okay. Can you hear anyone else inside the house anymore? No. There's no one here. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Is the person you shot still breathing? Up. Can you tell? No, I know. We're getting he's, there as fast as we can. Yeah, he's still, he's still breathing. Hurry up. Okay. Are you in the same room as him? Yeah, I'm still, I'm still okay. hiding in the closet. Okay, you're doing I had to go back in. He, he came in and said... Did the suspect have any weapons? I, I don't know if he did or not. The intruder, later identified as 29-year-old Joseph L. Anderson, was not armed. He died on the scene as a result of multiple gunshot wounds. As police arrived on site, they surrounded the home and sent canine units out in search of the remaining intruder who was believed to have fled the scene. The homeowner, his voice still trembling with anxiety, is unsure how many men actually entered the home. Once the canine unit cleared the immediate area of any threat, Birkbeck directs the homeowner to secure his weapon and prepare to surrender to police custody. Okay, you're doing a great job. Bear with me. We're getting there as fast as we can, okay? Are you okay? Are you injured at all? I'm, I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay. Okay, do a great job. I'm going to stay with you, okay? Because I'm going to have you put that gun down when officers okay. get there, okay? Yep, the, the gun will be done. No, no, I understand. Okay. You're doing a great job. Do you have any idea who these people are? I have no idea. No, yeah. This guy's still alive, but he's going to need help. Okay. Is he still breathing? Yeah, looks like it. Can you still hear someone inside? I think it's just people outside. I don't know. Do you want me to open the front door or anything? Nope, nope. Stay where you are. So we have officers coming around the back. Okay. So if you hear any noises, don't worry, all right? Okay. The 
call to 911 came around 2.30 this morning. Investigators say the man inside this home believed several intruders were making their way into his home from a backyard window. Initially, he thought there was at least maybe two or even possibly three suspects. So far, the investigation is proving that not to be true. It, it just appears to be one, one suspect uh, that acted alone at this time. King County Sheriff's deputies say the 35-year-old homeowner, while on the phone to 911, opened fire with a gun, killing the intruder. So far, investigators believe in this case, the homeowner was within his right to defend himself. You have every right to protect yourself and your family if you're in fear for your life or your safety. Uh, and it appears that's what happened in this instance, at least so far. Ultimately, there was no second intruder and the homeowner, whose identity remains anonymous to this day to protect his privacy, acted well within Washington State's justifiable homicide statute, which defines homicide committed in an act of self-defense when it reasonable to assume the person killed was planning to commit a felony or cause great personal injury as lawful. That homeowner will not face charges for the shooting. Cabo 7's Petronia Poonswan takes us through the moments from the first call for help when he opened fire. A 911 call reveals a crime in progress. Authorities said the homeowner was hiding in his bedroom closet while on the phone with the 911 operator. Minutes later, you can hear the female operator asking a question, then gunshots rang out. Neighbors we talked with today said that the homeowner has not stayed at the house since the break-in. I know the man has had has kids and I'm glad the kids weren't there. Deputy said the homeowner was alone that night. His only connection was the 911 operator who was there as he took action to protect himself. That 911 operator, Zoe Birkbeck, had only been on the job three weeks after completing her initial training when she took the call. Though brand new to the profession, her efforts have been heralded as masterful as she exhibited calm, skillful interaction with the homeowner as the situation quickly devolved into chaos. Birkbeck gives all credit to the homeowner, who also remained relatively calm and acted in self-defense of his home and himself. When faced with the shadowy uncertainty of death in your own home, would you stand your ground? These cases are growing more and more common as people are fighting back and taking control of their safety and ultimately their lives. More people are refusing to go quietly into the night, especially in the presumed safety of their own homes. That does it for another Felony Friday edition of Invisible Choir Premium. If you have thoughts on this case or cases like it, call our fan line at 651-337-9405. We'd love to hear from you on what has surely proven a rather controversial topic. We might just use your comments on the next episode. Until next time, remember to never whistle at night, because there may be more lurking in the shadows than darkness, even in your own home.